England's table tennis stars, known as the Leopards, return to Stoke-on-Trent for their next international match as part of the European Championships qualifying competition, with 30 nations vying to qualify in the top division at the championships. It was here at Fenton Manor Sports Centre four months earlier that the team won a hard-fought opening match, three games to two against Greece. An away win against the Netherlands was another good result but an away loss to Greece leaves England second in the group, with this final match to play. The match is just two days after the intense PG Mutual National Championships, where number one seed Paul Drinkle retained his title. So can the players keep their focus and energy levels? 24 hours after the Nationals and fierce rivals become teammates as the squad gathers together and they don the Three Leopards national emblem for their country. That also includes some rising young stars. Uh, well, I know all these guys outside as an individual, uh, individually and playing against them. So I haven't really been involved as a team member yet. Uh, but it's, it's certainly different. Um, you know, we're all supporting each other now instead of being in competition with one another. And that's a, it's a good experience, a good bonding experience. It was really good to win, win the under-21s at, at the weekend and uh, it's a bit different feeling now uh, coming here. We're all together as a team, not competing against each other and we're, we're working together to try and try and get a good result tomorrow. The experienced professionals on the team include Paul Drinkle, England's number one, Liam Pitchford and Sam Walker, who have represented their country many times and hopes are high of another victory against the less experienced Dutch team. It's a good match to bring England's under-21 stars into the squad to gain familiarity and is all part of Table Tennis England's long-term plans. Coach Alan Cook is an ex-international player and is focused on the drive to success in the sport. A long-term vision for me is to try to help as much as I can with the team around us to put English table tennis back somewhere near the top of the world, if not the top of the world. We know it's a, it's a tall order when you've got such incredible countries like China playing at the level they are, but certainly there's been a, a real positive trend in the last sort of two years, um, and we are now producing world-class players, so hopefully. But I, w I would like that to be not just as a one-off, but actually we, we're starting to do that on a, on a fairly constant basis, that the youngsters you know, believe that they can be the next Paul Drinkle or Liam Pitchford, Sam Walker, um, producing fantastic table tennis on the biggest stages. The governing body's management underwent an overhaul three years ago and set new targets and goals at all levels, including England's elite performance. This included bringing in a new head of talent and performance as part of a long-term plan. And ultimately, table tennis is an international game, like just about every sport these days. So you have to try and get the most out of yourself in, in a bigger context, and it's, it's a world game. And we were trying to compete successfully at World Championships, at Commonwealth Games, at uh, Olympic Games, and yet we weren't doing all the things that were probably necessary. So all I've really introduced ultimately is a series of standards that, that we're asking players and coaches to work towards. We're focusing a lot more on the teamship and the team behaviours and working in the team context and helping the players understand that they have to perform as individuals, but they're performing as part of something bigger than just in and of themselves. They're playing, obviously, against another opponent in an individual match within that team context. The outcome goals, um, yes, we would like to, to be successful on the international stage. We would like to win medals at major championships at Commonwealth Games next year. But we're not going to let that detract from the job, which is ultimately about helping players um, ach achieve what they're capable of and by finding out what they're capable of. And if we can do that as a performance programme, then who knows what's possible in the future. It's, anything is possible. At 24, David Macbeth is becoming a part of this plan. Already a professional player for a Swedish team and having played at the Commonwealth Championships, he is a little anxious about making his full England international debut. In the European League, this will be the first time I'll be playing. So it will definitely be my first, like I said, with the sort of big boys, if you like, it's the first, my first European League match. 
I'm very proud. It's definitely a, a great feeling, especially with the guys. A lot of the guys I'm playing with, are, I've grown up with, are also my friends, and it's a good atmosphere. It's a great laugh playing with them, and I really, really enjoy it. There are nerves, but I think nerves is a. It's, I think if you're nervous, it means you care about something. I think most players, if you ask them themselves, have high expectations anyway. So a lot of the pressure will be coming from me to perform. Basically, you know, obviously we're all thinking don't let the team down, but everyone wants to do well for themselves. Some people may find it a bit mad. I mean, there's a lot of training, six hours a day, seven hours a day, a lot of travelling back, back and forth. From the outside, it may seem pretty hectic. And I think if you're enjoying something, you don't really see it as a, a chore or strenuous. You kind of, yeah, just go along with it. I would like to continue playing at as high level as possible. There's things like the Commonwealth Games coming up. I'd like to be part of that team and win some medals for England, definitely. And I think as long as I'm fit and healthy, I'd like to keep playing for at the highest level possible. It's match day. And as the crowd gathers in the arena, backstage, even the most experienced players suffer pre-game nerves as they begin the opening ceremony and are introduced to a superb reception ahead of the national anthems. David is selected to play in the opening match. No pressure there then. First three points to David Macbeth of England. Gomez serves. Great shot into the crossover, but Gomez saw it, ran around his backhand, got his forehand in. And here we have Macbeth with game point, first game. And there he goes, down the crossover again, between the backhand and the forehand with Gomez. Nothing that Gomez could do with it. Goes over to see Alan Cook coaching. And will be happy with 11-5. So 2-1 in the second set. What a great backhand from Macbeth down the line. But Gomez played a beautiful backhand wide of the forehand and then another forehand from the backhand side. Troma and Lee Kian in support. So that puts Macbeth two points up. Very solid. Forehand serve from the backhand side from Gomez. A nice return from Macbeth. Gomez had the big forehand, went down the line, but just missed it. He'll be disappointed with that. None of them are easy. And here he is with game point, the end of the second. And Macbeth still got stuck away from the table. That's great length on the lob. Can he capitalise? Unlucky. Did the right thing. Good solid attacking there from Gomez. And Macbeth now, game point, and just off means David Macbeth, two games to love up. Sam Walker looking happy with it. And that's a beautiful backhand from Gomez, but look how fast David Macbeth got across wide of the forehand. Again, it was the block in the middle that enabled the big shot to follow. So can it be three straight to Macbeth? Oh, and Gomez gets lucky. Hits the edge of the table, that counts. Keeps him in it. Beth 9-6 up, not far away from victory, keeping the ball short around the net. Beautiful flat hit from Gomez, and he just missed the backhand wide of Beth's forehand. That's been Gomez's best shot, but uh, couldn't keep it going there. Beautiful play, well done, David. Little apology for the net. Gomez got back to 10 all, and here we are. Oh, oh. Just off the table, absolute fraction off. But all of a sudden, it's game point to Gomez, having been 6 10 down. The Dutch champion. And Sam Walker and Paul Drinkle discussing the tactics. Great crowd here at the Fenton Manor Sports Centre in Stoke on Trent. And there we have it. Gomez takes the third set, two games to one now. Oh, that serve popped up just a little bit. And David Macbeth able to crack it with his backhand. Came short, but a bit high. And that was all that Macbeth needed. 
again. Beth on top, but Gomez coming back at him. Gomez really does play well. The left-handed Dutchman playing his backhand wide of David's forehand. David, two points from victory here. He's in trouble. Oh, and it touched the edge. That's given him set point. That's the match against Gomez. But it's still love all in the match overall with more England players to come. Match point for David Macbeth. Come on! And there it is. David Macbeth, three games to one, gives England a 1-0 lead against the Netherlands. Well played, David. Yeah, it's very good. It was my, it's my first uh, home European League match, so it's very good, David. As you saw, I was a bit, a bit nervous after losing the third set, but I was happy to close it out in the end. I think it's massive because, it, especially for the guy going in second pitch now, I think it's, he can relax and know that he's got a lead behind him, so he can play his game and then increase that. I'm sure. So David puts the opening point on the board for England's leopards. And there's more international action still to come in this European Championships qualifying tie. We're in Stoke on Trent for the European Championship qualifying match between England and the Netherlands. And David Macbeth from Southampton has won the opening match to give England the lead. And the first to three wins takes the tie. Liam Pitchford is no stranger to international competition and has represented his country at all levels, including the Olympic Games. At 23, he plays professionally in France and is respected throughout the game as an exciting competitor. When I was young, I never really sort of, um, dreamt that I'd, I'd be playing for England and travelling all over the world and playing in all these big tournaments and Olympics and, and so on. But yeah, you know, when it becomes reality, then so it takes time to sink in, really. But yeah, every time I put on the England shirt, I feel proud and um, yeah, I just love playing. When I first got into table tennis, I just enjoyed the competitiveness of it, the sort of um, unpredictability. Everything, everything can happen in table tennis. It's not like it's nothing sure. You win, lose. I mean, yeah, I just enjoyed the this, this, the speed of it, the the spin involved. Not everybody can see that when they watch it on TV, but there's a lot of fine details that go on inside the game, and yeah, that's the that's what I find enjoyable. I think you know we we've, we've really got one of the best best atmospheres and, and team spirits in the in table tennis. I think that sort of you know we proved it last year in, in Kuala Lumpur in the World Championship when we we took a bronze medal, which um, exceeded all expectations. Really, I've done this for most of my life now, and. Um, it's not the um, probably life like footballers have or, or other sports like that, but um, yeah, it's what I love to do and um, I'll, I'll continue playing as long as I can. And Liam is up next, selected to play match two against Lawrence Troy. So Liam Pitchford serving, 4-2 down in the first game and he's in trouble again, back of the court. That's a great lob, can he do it again? Will Troma miss it? He doesn't, I don't think that's going on, and that's a little bit too wide. Unlucky, Liam. So the Netherlands looking to come back into this match. England 1-0 up. Tromer's a great young player. See how fast he is. Both right-handed, both very aggressive. And Pitchford's back in it. Beautiful backhand down the line again. That time he cut the ball away. That's a beautiful shot. He's pleased with that one. Tromo is something to think about now. Oof, what a big first forehand that was after the serve. He lets Liam loop it and then counters the loop to give it extra power. 11 10. Game point to Tromo. There's a big backhand. There's another one from Liam. He let that fly and that kept him in this first game. Back in it at 11 all. The lads are on their feet. Look at that. Absolute flying back end. Game point again against Liam. Can he hold on? And he's just missed it off the top of the net. First game to Troma. Troma's very impressive. Liam there. 
Played a great forehand from the forehand side, but no time to recover. Troma was so early to play it wide of his backhand. Forehand serve from the Dutchman. Dutch champion. And that's a beautiful side spin loop from Liam. He just saw that wide of the forehand was just a bit available. Big flick from Troma there. Couldn't quite put it away. Beautiful there. Backhand again from Liam Pickford. Cross court. Puts him back in it. Nine all. Two serves to come from Pitchford. Can he close the match out? 11 9. No! There's one. Looking strong. Sam knows he can do it. And that's the first match point to Liam Pitchford. This to put England two love up against the Netherlands. Troma's so fast. Both players having to play high risk. They know what the other player can do. Match point to Troma here. Liam stayed in it, followed up with a nice backhand. 12 all in the final game. Okay, so Liam gets another match point. Can he finish this off now? Forehand serve from the backhand side. Where's he going to go with it? Down the line again? Yes, he does. Troma's backhand, beautiful, but there it is. Liam Pickford's backhand, really, really strong in the end. Delighted to win that one. Keep Troma at bay. Troma 200 in the world. Liam around about 40 now, and that gives England a two sets to love lead against the Netherlands. I just stuck to my to my tactic, and um, you know he was he was hitting some really good balls, and but uh, at them crucial moments, I think I I played the points well, and um, yeah, managed to take it. I think he, he was maybe thinking about winning too much, maybe. Um, yeah, I just kept playing my game, you know. Uh, I wasn't thinking about the result or anything. I was, um, yeah, just trying to take one point at a time. And, yeah, we've been, we've had a few close games in the past. And, um, yeah, it kind of pulled me through it. So, a hard-fought match that went down to the wire. That gives England a two-point lead. And now, Alan Cook elects his number one player, Paul Drinkle who knows all about the pressure of performance at the highest level, having reached the final 16 in the last Olympic Games. I think playing for England, playing for yourself, you put pressure on yourself, but obviously playing for England, you've got other pressures in, in there, and then playing for Great Britain at an Olympic Games is even more pressure. And I think especially for a sport like ours, we don't always get to all the media coverage and things, and as soon as you get selected for the, the Olympic Games or qualify for the Olympic Games, that all starts and it does start bringing a little bit more pressure but for me personally I, I like that pressure I think I perform better under that pressure and the last few years it's just I think as individuals we've sort of all improved um, including all the staff members of staff and everything and we had a big change around and things like that but and then sort of as we've improved as individuals the team has, has improved together as well and you know I think now we just believe and I think also other people see us as a threat and you know, sort of worry and say, oh, England, you know, they're, they're never beaten and they're always going to be a tough team to beat, um, even for the top teams like China and things in the Olympics, we lost to them. Um, but at the moment, that's a positive for us. But, you know, we don't want to just be the ones that got closest to China. We want to be the ones that beat them. So we're still looking to improve. For me, I mean, yeah, unofficial team leader, if you like, from the player's side. I think, I mean, again, I enjoy it. Um, it's all, almost another task, so I've got to try and do my best on the table and play well and try and represent the team that way, but also off the table I try and help and keep the team together and hopefully I can keep doing that and, and go on in the future and, and keep helping other players and helping the, the nation as a whole to try and, try and be the best we can. So, can Paul take control of the match and make this a 3-0 victory for England? Paul Drinkle playing well at the start of this third match. If England win 3-0, that's game over against Holland. Bruce Bowder, first game point down. That's a beautiful forehand from Paul Drinkle, and he takes the first 11-4. So, first of three. Drinkle against Oost Bowder. And Drinkle, one game up and eight one up. Beautiful stuff. That's a great backhand flip from Drinkle. 
He was in trouble there, but managed to squeeze his forehand out and got the real length with it. Lovely forehand across court. Just managed to get the length on that topspin. And now Drinkle. Game point to go two games to love up. You see the side spin on the backhand and then bent the forehand wide of Oostvelder's forehand. That's a great finish. Two games to love. Look at that side spin. First of all with the backhand and then with the forehand. One slow and one very, very fast. So Paul Drinkle five points away from taking England to a victory against Holland. Drinkle really is playing well. Played at the Nationals at the weekend and won it for the sixth time. National champion. It does look like he's leading the team at the moment. Taking all the responsibility on him. Such a warrior. What a great career Paul's having. Short served to the forehand. He's found it. Just caught his finger, I think. So Paul Drinkle, a couple of points ahead. Playing that serve straight down the line. He's found it coming across the player backhand from the forehand side. Helshan supporting alongside Liam Pitchford and the team. Helshan nearly put Paul Drinkle out of the Nationals last weekend. But here at the Fenton Manor Sports Centre in Stoke, we've got Paul Drinkle looking close to a victory. And that'll take us to a win. Liam Pitchford won, David Macbeth won. And this is close to an England victory against the Netherlands. And that's match point. Beautiful forehand flip from Paul Drinkle. You see that one? Bang. Straight across court. Little clench of the fist. He'll be pleased and relieved. And now four match points for England. Victory. Serves it long, but he was happy to counter. And that's game set and match. Paul Drinkle leads the line, takes the match, well supported by David Macbeth and Liam Pitchford, who both won. Checked hands with players, umpires. All in the crowd. Goes to see the opposition. And that's a fantastic win for England against the Netherlands. It's a convincing victory for Paul. I think mentally I was confident going into the match. I know after a strong weekend, strong matches at the weekend in the Nationals, um, I finished that off well, so tried to start that, start this match the same as ending the Nationals and I managed to do that and, and that, that then impacted my physical game as well and I, I played a good strong match tonight. A solid win, but means they finished second in the qualifying group on a tie-break. So now they move to the playoff stage and will meet Slovakia. England's women will also take on Spain in their playoff match. So join us next time for this special programme as both of England's senior teams bid for a place at the European Championships.